all right, thank you for joining us and welcome to this highly unusual edition of Comedy Unleashed Al Fresco. Dominic Frisbee! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Hello! And uh, I read on uh, that this is the um, number one comedy night in front of the Scottish Parliament in the whole of the Edinburgh Festival this uh, Thursday evening. This is the most hyped gig at the Edinburgh Festival this year. Incredible. Well, I cannot tell you how much excitement it gives me to be singing this next verse in this location. <laughs> They said she was formidable, a lady to admire. The Scottish Margaret Thatcher, full of balls and full of fire. All those English tyrants, she would hold them to account. She'd have another referendum with loads and loads of recounts. She's just so brave, she's just so strong, such a success. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> maybe Nicola Sturgeon's burglar bill. A socialist of the old school with her hands in the till. Power crazed, praised and praised, they said that she was a genius. I cannot wait for her cellmate to be some bird with a penis. <laughs> Baby Nicola Sturgeon's burglar bill. Sometimes you find yourself with an opinion. That's all it is, a point of view. You're not going to hurt anyone with it. You're not going to stab someone with your opinion. But it's not the right opinion. It's not the opinion they want you to have. So you keep it to yourself. And they tell you their opinion. You may not want to hear it, but they tell you. I'm not talking about taxi drivers here, but... Uh, left-wing comedians. They tell you their opinion, man, they shove it down your throat. You say, I I'm not sure about that, there could be another side to that. And they look at you, and they say, you're a far-right racist, homophobe, you're a fascist, you're a sexist, you're a xenophobe, you gathered, you are dealing on your chauvinist, you Tory scum, you capitalist, you're a bigot, you're a wing man, you're a swither like you, and you'll get your freaking justice, you extremist buffoon, you're spreading hate, you're spreading hate, you're spreading hate! <laughs> So this guy I know was telling me about Jeremy Corbyn, how he could have saved the country. I said, I'm not sure about that. He said, no, socialism is the best way to help people. And I said, I'm not sure about that either. Not even sure a lot of people want helping out. A lot of them just want to be left alone. And he said, these people need helping out, even if they don't know it. Socialism is the way. I started thinking of places where they tried socialism. Russia, China, Germany had that national socialism thing going on. Cuba, Venezuela. I couldn't think of one that had worked. He said, no, that wasn't real socialism. <laughs> Got infected by capitalism. And I said, are you sure? And he looked at me. You're a far-right racist, homophobe You're a fascist, you're a sexist, you're a xenophobe You patriarch, you're transphobic Biphobic, Islamophobic I'm offended by your views, you should do a lot of time Having wrong opinions is a hate crime right? You're spreading hate! You're spreading hate! You're spreading hate! You're literally Hitler!
So I went for a drink in that place where the spoons. And there was a woman outside with a loud hailer saying that if you go into Weatherspoons, since the owner came out in favour of Brexit, you go into Weatherspoons, you are funding hate. And I said, it's only £3.50 a pint. <laughs> Funding that much hate. <laughs> and I said, I'm part Italian, I've seen the youth unemployment down there, and I don't support that. And if you ask me, big tech, big government, big corporations, it's all part of the same problem. And decisions are better made locally. And she looked at me and she said, Fair enough. <laughs> Better be good. <laughs> oh my god. Well, at least it's a place that's very conducive to comedy. <laughs> Hopefully, another siren will pass by a few times and block out these very under rehearsed jokes. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, you're in good hands, as you can tell from that pause, that first pause. This is my sixth gig, I think, so it's brilliant to be doing it here. So good. So good to be doing it up by a busy road with uh, <laughs> with uh, the, the the cameras from the McCarthy trials. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. So uh, I think, but, but actually, no. I should say that even though it is like an early gig, I have I have been getting very positive responses. You're in safe hands. Uh, so many people have come up to me. <laughs> Excuse me. So many people have uh, come up to me and said after a gig, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very positive. Very positive. Response. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, yeah, yeah. At all the gigs I've done, I've received a sitting uh, ovation which is the rarer form of ovation, which is why you don't hear about it so much. I killed that joke. <laughs> um, someone, just, someone just said, I just apologize for the mess today, the insanity today. And Dominic it was, he said, uh, yeah, just uh, calm down with the tweeting. <laughs> then he does three songs about trans people. <laughs> calm down with the tweeting. Um, uh, okay, so I should keep it light. So I'm going to talk just for a few seconds about uh, cancer of the testicles. Um, I am famously divorced. People are always telling me online I'm divorced, and it must be true. It would certainly explain a few things. I don't think I'm ever getting that cup of tea. <laughs> But unlike a lot of divorced people, I don't want to let my life kind of uh, slide. Uh, divorced men especially, they tend to go to seed. And I don't like that, I don't want that to happen to me, so... I do little things, I try and keep my place clean, for instance. Um, you wouldn't want to rub a, you know, white glove over the surfaces, but... It's not too bad. Although, uh, a few weeks ago I had a friend around at the flat, it was a, it was a lady, and... Um, she went to the toilet, and this is very, very embarrassing, uh, but there was still a poo in the bath. <laughs> I know, I know. We've all done it. <laughs> After a big meal or when you're late for work. <laughs> and, I and I tried to explain it to her that, it, you know, I was trying to make a good impression and I had to rush the bath. I like to watch things on Netflix, uh, but it's, uh, it's hard because there's so many things, there's so much choice that I've been looking for material. It's hard to find material because we've all got so many, you know, different things we watch. No one shares the same things. It's not like when, you know, when we had three channels, you know. Uh, and unfortunately, it's just really hard to come up with material because we don't have that shared connection anymore. Like, does anyone know the band uh, Wibbly Wobbly Wilburys? No. That's 
shame the drummer gets up to all sorts of antics. Um, what about the Swedish crime series Clock O'Clock? Has anyone been watching Clock <laughs> About the detective, Martin Clock O'Clock? <laughs> no? Doesn't get on with his daughter? <laughs> what about the uh, Channel 4 series, uh, educational series, Children Looking Up Arseholes? <laughs> <laughs> anyone seen that? Apparently there's a lot of mystery surrounding the anus. And it's very important for children to know that they all come in different shapes and sizes. <laughs> it's essential for children to know, for some fucking reason. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's been such a strange day that I think I'll leave it there. Um, but I just wanted to say, um, first of all, I'm really sorry that you got messed around today. Uh, as you can tell, you know, despite the animal cruelty, there's not really much to these jokes apart from, Aww, you know, you said animals. <laughs> you know, it's 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 just insane. I mean, I, I've been I've been fighting this stuff for five years, and I've never seen anything as insane as the last two days. You know, and I keep asking people what I've said wrong and what I what I'm saying wrong in this fight about women's spaces, about children being mutilated and sterilised in gender clinics, and about the women who are being harassed and threatened. You know, uh, for standing up to. So, so, what I would like to do is, uh, you know, the comedy is something, it, it's my first love, it's the thing I love to do, um, but I've not been allowed to do that for five years, uh, and this is just what I decided I would do to keep me down with water, a couple of silly jokes, and they can't even let me do that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, so now that I've just completely killed the atmosphere for the next video, <laughs> which was sort of the plan, to be honest, uh, I will take my leave, but, but uh, I will hang around, and I hope uh, to see you all for a drink after, and thank you very much for coming. Um, I'd like to thank my mum and dad before we get started. Uh, no, seriously, I would. Uh, it's thanks to them that I'm here. When I left school, when I told them I want to be a professional comedian, they actually paid for me to do a joke course. Uh, if you guys were the same one, it was called History at University of Bristol. <laughs> That's strange. So my mum don't think that one's funny at all, to be honest. She's like, Alistair, can you stop using your history degree in jokes? I'm like, to be fair, mum, where else do you expect me to use it? Right? This is how they mess with young people these days. They say, oh, you've got to go to university. You've got to go to university. You'll never get a job now at university, right? I was in a group job interview once, okay? The lady sitting next to me, she had a degree in nuclear physics, right? She's a borderline genius, this lady. The balls on the guy around the interview, he goes, well, the thing that's bothering me, Jennifer, is I'm looking at your CV, and you don't have any experience in recruitment. <laughs> well, it's like, no, but she does have some in nuclear physics, which I'm pretty sure might be harder. You know, no offence, Jeffrey, but if she can split an atom, I reckon she can probably figure out how to pick up this phone and start fucking bothering people. <laughs> right, no offence to anyone that works in recruitment, by the way. God knows, all my friends work in recruitment now. Ever since the pandemic, all my friends work in recruitment. I had one friend that wasn't working in recruitment, he just started working in recruitment, and I said to him, why have you started working in recruitment? He looked me straight in the eyes, he goes, mate, there's no jobs out there. <laughs> I'm like, there's no jobs, everyone's working recruitment. What are you guys doing? Calling each other? Is that what we do? I'm telling you, it's a complete waste of money. My, my friend, she went to university, she spent a fortune, she come out with a gender studies degree. Well, I said to her, can you make money out of gender studies? She said, yes, actually, Alistair, the skills you learn in gender studies are very transferable. And don't laugh, because that must be true, because she works in a bowling alley now, so... <laughs> I'm not having to go as well. She explained to me, she said, Alison, when you go to university and you learn about gender studies, you learn about all the ways that women get screwed over financially in the world because they're women. I'm like, listen, I agree with you. There's loads of ways that women get screwed over financially in the world because they're women, and one of them is a gender studies degree. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a bunch of men who own a university, and they're like, oh, ladies, do you want to find out how you're getting screwed over in the world financially? I tell you what, give us 40 grand, we'll tell you all about it. 
You think I wasted my money on a history degree? She'd done a gender studies degree 12 years ago. At that point, there was two genders. <laughs> right, there's 367 now. How does that work? Do they call you up and say, listen, I know you got a 2-1 when you've done your degree 12 years ago, but we've remarked it by modern standards and it looks like you're under arrest. <laughs> Do you know what makes me laugh, right? I'm religious, like I believe in God, I'm a Christian, and it used to be the case that you science people could laugh at us because we believe in God because we're ridiculous and we believe all these fantasies. Now, bring a scientist up here and say, listen, can a woman have a penis? And watch them be like, ah, oh, uh, carry the one denominator. You ask Jesus, can a woman have a penis? He'll tell you, no, no. <laughs> And I know I'm in the minority believing in God. I know I'm in the minority, but let me ask you this question, right? Let me ask you this question. Even though you might not believe in God, do you ever find yourself going, oh my God? You ever say, Even though you don't believe in God, you're like, oh my God. Right? I'm driving with my friend once, right? She thinks we're gonna have a car crash. So she thinks we're gonna crash. She goes, Jesus Christ, right? And then we didn't have a car crash. And I said, well, wait a second. You don't believe in Jesus. She said, no. I said, but you yelled his name when you thought you were gonna die. I'm like, do you find that strange? Like, have you ever done that with something else you don't believe in? Have you ever had a bullet whiz past your head and be like, Thomas, the tank engine, that was close. Oh my goddess. <laughs> it's fun to have a fun, poke fun at science because the science is getting more and more ridiculous. Like, the things they tell us, like, at the same time, they tell us that the Earth is a giant ball of lava hurtling through space at 60,000 miles an hour, and at the same time, they tell us, and you're going to destroy it with a plastic straw. <laughs> Now, I started believing in God when I was at school. I remember being in school, and when you go to school, they give you two options for how the universe was created, right? First of all, you get the science option, and I remember being in there, and then you get the religious option. And I remember going to the religious teacher, and he was like, well, what happened was God created the universe with magical powers. He was like, let there be light, let there be mushrooms. And I was like, this sounds crazy. I'm like, this sounds ridiculous. And then I got to science, and they were like, well, what happened was nothing exploded. I was like, I don't know about you, but let there be light is starting to sound more and more convincing to me. You know, at least religious people are trying. There's a book, there's a backstory. Science has given me pop goes the universe. Nothing exploded. Did anything come out of the explosion of nothing? Everything. How convenient. Has this ever happened again since? You ever hear two people arguing, babe, did you leave nothing in a shoebox? Well done. There's a fucking universe in here now. I got kicked out of science at 12 years old. The teacher was like, nothing exploded into everything. Are there any questions? I was like, yes, sir, sorry. I, I do have a couple of questions, but before I get to my questions, I don't want to alarm anyone in the class, but I've got nothing in my pencil case. Are we safe? <laughs> he said, Williams, get out. I said, sir, you can't send me out there. There's nothing in the corridor. I could be blown to pieces. <laughs> do you guys like dogs? <laughs> I love dogs, man. I just got a dog, and this lady, she goes, oh, I don't know why you got dogs. I, I prefer cats. She goes, cats are so much more intelligent than dogs. I'm like, so what? I, I didn't get a pet to help me with my tax returns. Also, for all the cat people out there, if cats are so intelligent, how come none of them have got jobs? There's dogs in the police. There's dogs in the military. There's guide dogs. You ever seen a cat that gives a shit about a blind person anywhere? Cats are real intelligent until it's trying to help out and they're like, oh, no, I'm doing glitz, senor. Any questions? <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what. I like you guys, so I'll tell you when the history degree does come in handy, okay? This cost me 20 grand. You can use this one for free. Americans try and catch you up with this one. They go, ah, did you know if it wasn't for us, you'd all be speaking German right now? It's like, listen, buddy, if you knew anything about the history of this country, you would know that we would never learn a second language. <laughs> British have lost several wars throughout history. We didn't learn anything at all. The Romans came over here, they kicked the crap out of everyone. How many of you guys speak Latin? <laughs> uh, guys, it's been a fun audience. Uh, my name's Alistair Williams. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks a lot. See you later.